What's happening everyone, Tom Goran here, welcome to episode number 13 of the F124 Alpine to Glory career mode series. In today's video, we are going to be racing around Mexico. This is round 13, I believe, of season one of the Alpine to Glory here in Mexico City for the Mexico City Grand Prix. We begin with a contract update. As you can see, we are pretty much aiming above our contract status to the point where we're probably going to get resigned for next season. And there is the championship standings. We are fifth. In the championship, we have lost ground to Lando Norris, and we are still ahead of Sergio Perez with only four races to go. So, as we approach the end of Season 1, we have to try and focus on next season. And what I mean by that is the upgrade facilities, because um, there, ha there is a rule change for next season but before we discuss about that let's talk about the specialists as you can see reach 180 mile an hour for the power unit consultant finish in a better position than your teammate for the quality insurance tester we're going to go with this lifting coast for 30 seconds or more during a race weekend and that is pretty much about that as you can see there is my ratings and just all of the uh, normal stuff um it's been a while since I've done some of the customization, so I've decided to change my celebrations and also my helmets because now we're actually getting some better helmet designs in F124. So we've decided to go with this helmet design and this was the helmet design that we unlocked um, thanks to the Fernando Alonso, I think it was what, it wasn't, was it Chance Career or was it the scenario around Silverstone? I'm not sure, but the helmet does look quite nice and this is also the helmet that I'm running in RFL Season 12. By the way, you can catch me watching uh, RFL League Races live every Saturday on my kick. The link will be down in the description. So we're going to be using that Alonso unlocked helmet. Uh, for the rest of this season and maybe even the rest of the career mode but as you can see there is the performance with the upgrades and the durability and the chassis departments are at risk seven departments and um, seven parts as far as the department is concerned we've got the plank there it's pretty much all of the work that we've done this season to try and make our chassis somewhat competitive and have you ever noticed that when you're doing these upgrades in the F1 games and if there is a season or if there is a regulation change, it's always the department that you put in the most effort in. So it's never the one that you don't really touch. It's always one that you've put the most effort in. And for this season, for us, it was the chassis. And how ironic is it that the chassis and the durability uh, departments are the ones that are in danger for next season? Um, so, um, because of the season break, there's not really anything that's going to be happening as far as the next couple of weeks in October. So, we're going to be doing a season break and there's not really any upgrades because, one, we don't have any resource points and, two, we're going to try and focus on saving our upgrades for next season. And as you can see, we've made a, a tremendous uh, we've made tremendous progress from being where we were as far as the second or third West car to now being a solid midfield team with only four races to go. Hopefully, we can try and challenge for fourth place in the Constructors' title. Um, we are nearly tied with Aston Martin as far as being a, qu a you know the fifth uh, quickest car um, out of the midfield. But anyway, no upgrades to go. Round 13 of Season 1 of the Alpine to Glory in Mexico. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more F124 content. And let's get straight in to the race weekend. What an atmosphere we've got. The fans have been here since dawn and the stadium, the Faro Sol, is absolutely heaving. We're about to get set to set the grid for tomorrow's Grand Prix. It's qualifying day here in Mexico City. So let's do this here in Mexico City. Um, this is a track I actually don't mind racing at, um, but considering that this was the first time I've done this track with no line, it did take me some time to get used to, and you'll see with this qualifying time how, I wouldn't say uncomfortable, but just how far off the pace I am. We're pretty much two sectors in, across the line we go to do a 1 minute a 15.1, and that puts us 13th place ahead of Yuki Tsunoda and behind Logan Sargent. However, in this second run, I kind of botched it. So as you can see, um, I pretty much do the automatic um, outlap. 
and we have 15 seconds left entering sector 3 and I quickly realized that oh no I don't have enough time on my hands uh, to get around this lap now I could have cheesed by cutting that hairpin there and saved myself a couple of seconds left but as you can see around about now we miss out on the lap by I'd say five seconds five four seconds uh, which puts us 16th place for this race and unfortunately because of our own wrongdoing we get out qualified by Pierre Gasly who actually has a decent lap in Q um, in the last part of qualifying to do a 14-6 one tenth ahead of Lance Stroll and he goes to P9 uh, Alonso is in 12th uh, Albon 11th there and yeah Daniel Ricciardo in P20 so a bit of a mess up there on our end as far as qualifying is concerned and yet we do eventually lose some uh, progress on our racecraft and also our pace. However, it's time for the race. Bienvenidos to the most populous city in North America. The legendary Jim Clark won the first official F1 race back in 1963 here. And we've had a veritable who's who of winners ever since. It's Mexico City and therefore the Mexico City Grand Prix. At 2,285 metres above sea level, the thin air of the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez poses a unique challenge, not just to a driver's skill, but to the efficiency of their engines as well. 17 corners then make a lap of this 2.6 mile circuit, expect incredible speeds in excess of 220 miles per hour and overtaking into the braking zones of Turn 1 and Turn 4. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. And the smooth operator Carlos Sainz completes the front row. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Perez, Hamilton, Oscar Piastri, Russell, Norris, Gasly, Stroll, Albon, Fernando Alonso, Sonoda, Sargent, Thomas, Hulkenberg, Bottas, Magnussen, Ricardo, and Joe Guan Yu. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. And alongside me here today in the commentary box, Anthony Davidson. Let's look at their season and particularly against their teammate. Fair to say, they've got the better of them more often than not. Now, I'll be generous here. It's not that long ago that you were racing and entertaining us on a Sunday. Uh, but in the years since, the sport has changed quite a bit, hasn't it? Yeah, it really has, Croft. You know, the cars have got bigger, they're heavier. But critically, there's more downforce to play with as well now. There was about four tonnes of downforce on the car at 300 kilometres an hour when I drove. You're now looking more towards five tonnes of downforce. So, there, you know, there's a, a big difference in performance. Uh, but you've, because of that, being the car being heavier and bigger you've got to drive in a smoother way you've got to look after it a bit more you've got to nurse it through the slow speed corners more they were much more nimble agile machines when i drove in formula One compared to now so here we go round 13 of season one of the alpine to glory in mexico city it's a very rare track that i that i do these races on and um, considering i don't really touch mexico in this game but there is pretty much the setup a bit of a higher uh, front wing just to help with the downforce around here because it's mexico high air pressure etc high tire pressure as well and yeah hopefully we can score some points today here we go then, the formation lap gets underway and the excitement here is building as we near ever closer to the start of the race. Which team will come out on top? Who's got their strategies right for today's race? Well, we'll soon find out. We're almost ready to start the race as the cars take their positions on the grid with the drivers and teams making their final preparations. Okay, so the aim of this race is to pretty much try and somehow get a low top 10 if we can try and get a 10 for an 8 for best that would be really really good for us but you know this is our own well doing we didn't get the lap in in qualifying and we have to pay the price by starting in 16th same tie strategy as anyone else 
to mediums to pretty much hards for the remainder of this race. Make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe as well. We are so close to 900 subscribers. If we can get there by the end of this month, I would be massively appreciative of that feat. Anyway, round 13 of season one of the Alpine to Glory, the Mexico Grand Prix, getting ready for five red lights and away we go it's a good start by us nico hulkenberg has had a tremendous start he's already jumped me and also logan Sargent as well three wide between yuki Sonoda and nico hulkenberg and also fernando alonso as we go in towards turn one i'm going to tell my engineer to shop because i don't want him speaking around the outside we go of logan Sargent. we have to track extend in towards turn one and that is the line you want to be taking on turn one there uh, Lance Troll and Lando Norris go slowly. Gasly's trying to uh, follow, I think that's Lewis Hamilton, I believe, as we jump. Lando Norris, we're going to try and go around the outside of Oscar Piastri in towards turn four. And we actually do it, and we are already into P8. That is a mega start by us. We went, we, we literally gained eight positions in the space of one lap. That, that, that was such a great start for us that I was even quite surprised as far as how good of a start I had um, on that first lap. However, now we're on lap number three, and I'm just trying to just get into a rhythm of the race. I don't want to overtake Pierre Gasly, but he is kind of holding me up. And as you can see, that train right there, we are go we go purple in the first sector as we go around the outside of our teammate there, and that is for P number seven in the Mexican Grand Prix. So we've already made nine positions already on in this race with one of five difficulty, and now this train as we hit the back of George Russell, there he breaks really early. I don't know why he broke really early there, but we go down the outside of George Russell and we are now in towards P6 into this race. So it's actually it's actually been a good start and I don't really want to lose time to compared to the AI. All I want to do is just, you know, race, you know, behind them and just try and learn this track a lot more. This is what this first season of the Alpine to Glory is really about as far as a driver perspective. You know, I'm running no line, so I'm going to try and land the braking zones, land the tracks, you know, in a skillful way. As we go around the outside against Lewis Hamilton in towards turn one, and that is P5 here in Mexico City, and we have the hometown hero Sergio Perez in P number four. A lot of speculation in real life as far as his seat. Uh, Red Bull have retained him for the remainder of the season. However, will he be in Red Bull for 2025? We will soon find out as he goes around the outside against Carlos Sainz. And Sergio is on to the podium positions. However, Red, uh, Max Verstappen is in the lead by quite some distance. That's around about six seconds towards uh, Charles Leclerc. And then Perez is there. And we're going to go try and go around the outside of Carlos Sainz. He hasn't got the RS. So we're going to go the long way around in towards turn number four. We have the inside line for five, and that is a podium position in, in what is it, six laps? Just under six laps, and now we move on towards lap eight, and now we can try and start to fight against Sergio Perez. Who knows? We might um, we might be, you know, competing for the Red Bull seat, because if Red Bull do lose the constructors in real life, and also in this game, then maybe they might want to call us up to replace. So now on the approach of lap 10, and I didn't want to overtake Sergio Perez here. I wanted to just extend my gap towards Carlos Sainz and also Lewis Hamilton. But as you can see, he is a little bit slow on the straights. And as you can see, we go around the outside of Sergio Perez. We go a little bit deep in towards turn one. We have to slightly cut across turn two. And we absolutely abuse turn three as far as the track limits are concerned. Um to defend our position against uh, Sergio Perez, but we do retain P3 in this race. So it looks good. It looks like we're going to be on the podium here as again, we lose the back end. And that was one of the things that was quite annoying me with this race. And um, as far as the setup is concerned, it's just rear tire wear and just rear downforce. And um, because with this track, you do want a lot of downforce because it's obviously high altitude in Mexico and you've got these high speed corners as well and plus also the slow speed in sector two as well that will really you know you know damage the rear tires as well but you also don't want too much of rear downfall simply because you want the car to turn more especially for the medium to low speed corners especially like these ones around here so as you can see we are what just over two seconds away from Charles Leclerc and what I want to do is just work with Sergio to try and you know get with under a second of Charles Leclerc, and as you can see, 
uh, Perez, uh, uh, Perez's light is flashing. So I don't know if he's, you know, if he's got no battery or if if he's saving battery or whatever. But I don't really want to fight Sergio to the point where we lose time to Carlos Sainz and also Lewis Hamilton, and that's exactly what we're doing. And on lap 12, here comes Carlos Sainz. He's going to go on, on the inside of us. We're going to try and use Sergio Perez for slipstream. A little bit of a hesitation as far as the braking is concerned, but we do lose. P4 to Sergio, well, we lose P4 to Carlos Sainz, and now we are under pressure from Lewis Hamilton. Um, I'm trying to see where my teammate is, and I think my teammate is in P8 or P9. He's ahead of the team of Clarens. So, in this ideal world, I want to slowly but surely try and close the train to the point where my teammate, Max Verstappen, is out! Max Verstappen's out of the Mexican Grand Prix, and it's another... It's another engine failure. Max Verstappen is out of the Mexican Grand Prix and his championship lead onto Charles Leclerc has taken another blow here this season. So as long as Charles Leclerc potentially maybe wins this race or comes second, he will do massive damage towards Max Verstappen's bid to becoming a full-time world champion. However, we're going to do Max a favor and overtake um, Charles Leclerc for second place in this race. So technically, we could be the benef benefiting factors as far as to what actually happens in the championship in the next three races. Because Max is now DNF, which means as long as Charles Leclerc doesn't DNF through mechanical issues or if he doesn't crash, then Charles will gain massively on the Red Bull of Max Verstappen. However, there's only two people that's going to stop him from maybe winning this race, and that's me, and also Charles Leclerc. We box in towards the hard tyres, 2.5 second pit stop, and we are triggering the undercut on Sergio Perez, because the undercut is powerful on F124, and I'm not the only one. It's me, it's Charles Leclerc, and it's Lewis Hamilton. We've all came in with the exact same minds as uh, Sho Guan Yu comes in for the same strategy, and I mean, those cars, they don't really matter, but as you can see, Russell Perez is coming out the box, and we have... Literally undercut Sergio Perez. However, we've lost track position now to Charles Leclerc, and Charles Leclerc now leads the Mexican Grand Prix with 15 laps to go. So now we're in a bit of a tricky situation because we've got Charles Leclerc ahead of us, we've got Perez behind us on the fast lap, Perez is our championship rival, and then we've got Hamilton and then Carlos Sainz just under four seconds down the road. So I don't want to fight Charles Leclerc, I don't want to overtake him, I don't want to lose time to Charles Leclerc, but what I want to do is I don't want to give uh, Sergio Perez the chance to pretty much overtake us when we don't see him coming. So I'm constantly monitoring uh, Sergio Perez's movement and we're just using uh, Charles Leclerc for pretty much slipstream purposes to try and help us get away from Sergio Perez. But as you can see, Perez, he just gets such a better run out of that final corner. And this might be the move that loses second place in the race. However, we do go overtake and with Charles Leclerc's help on the slipstream, we do defend from Sergio Perez. And that was kind of the that was kind of the um, move or the, the, the meta for this part of the race. As here we go, once again, Perez tries to go on the inside. However, he does get boxed in. And it's going to be free wide between us, Leclerc and Perez in towards turn one. I have to give the room to us, uh, Sergio Perez. And as you can see, uh, we, do take, we do take the lead of the Mexico Grand Prix. However, Perez and Leclerc, um, that's not good. Perez is now in second place and Leclerc has lost three positions in the space of three corners. And it's now down in towards P4. And as you can see now... We're going to try and just go defensive. Perez goes around the outside. We're going to try and force him wide and do a Verstappen on Sergio Perez. And it looks like it is whacked. And now we're going to try and close the gap towards us and our teammate. However, it doesn't seem like our teammate has uh, some type of pace. As you can see, he's literally behind that train of Alonso and both of the McLaren. So it looks like for these la next seven laps, it's going to be... This train between me, Sergio Perez, Hamilton, Leclerc and Sainz for the win. However, Perez got away, so we're going to have to do a massive dot lunge down the inside in towards turn 4. We make contact with the Red Bull. However, we do retain the lead of the Mexican Grand Prix, and that was a mega dive bomb. Um, I, I'm not really sure why I did that, to be fair. 
I just wanted Paris to lose position and it looks like it's whack because Hamilton is now on the inside in towards his corner and Lewis Hamilton takes second place in this race with only six laps to go and now um, I'm out of battery. There's nothing I can really do and there goes Hamilton and I'm, I'm going to get mugged off here. I am. There goes Sergio Perez. There goes Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari and we're going to try and go three wide there. They break really early. 4 turn one I don't know why, um, but there's no way through for us and Hamilton is now set off in towards the, the distance for the win of this race. However, I do not want Sergio Perez to be second place as there goes Carl oh, Sainz. Sainz now back into the free. This is mental. They're still going side by side is Charles Leclerc and, and Sergio Perez. Still going side by side in towards that corner and they pretty much were going side by side in towards sector three. However, this is probably my favorite move of the entire race. I literally saw they went side by side in towards turn one, so I decided to go and do a switchback on Sergio Perez, and I'm gonna let Charles Leclerc go. Bit of contact there on the rear, but as long as we beat Sergio Perez, that is all that matters in this race, and that was pretty much the story. Um, yeah, as long as Sergio wasn't close enough, we were able to use uh, Charles Leclerc's slipstream and also DRS to help us defend. As Lewis Hamilton comes around the final corner to win the Mexican Grand Prix. However, for us, it's another surprise podium from 16th to P3. Unbelievable. Yes, thank you. Thank you for all your hard work out there. That was a really strong drive and a great finish. Well done. And Lewis Hamilton takes the checkered flag and once again wins. You always look back at a race like this and think, if I just made that mistake there or locked up here, there would have been contact. And every one of those overtakes is a moment where you have to absolutely nail it, perfect it. And that's exactly what they're able to do today. Great stuff indeed. And I can see the drivers starting to approach the podium for the victory celebrations. A real team victory today. Everybody played their part. Congratulations then to Mercedes, your race winners. So Lewis Hamilton wins in Mexico City. His future is still undecided as far as next year is concerned. Is he going to do what he does in real life and go to Ferrari for 2025? Or is he staying at Mercedes? to try and get another championship however Hamilton wins in Mexico with Charles Leclerc closing the gap towards Max Verstappen and us it's another podium again another solid podium we are since we are we are completely overachieving in this first season of the Alpine to glory we have a solid midfield car however we are literally competing against the AI there's Sergio Perez, 18, was that 18-4 or was it 16-4? 16-4, five times away, Carlos Sainz 17-1, Gasly 17 flat. So we were pretty much on the same pace as far as the Ferrari and also my teammate. And as you can see, the ratings boost increases there. 83 racecraft, 83 pace, pretty much 80 awareness, 79 focus, and we are nearly at level um, at rating 82 for the RTG. And the recognition is still hasn't changed as much. So specialist goals, we are now pretty much level four for the manufacturing expert and more progress to all the other specialists. However, we're going to end this video on a cliffhanger. So as we go back to the home screen for round 14, you'll notice pretty much in a minute um, that we have a secret meeting around about now. And there it is. We have a secret meeting with Aston Martin and yeah, they bring my crack involved in towards the meeting. I don't know what the hell's going on here. However, my crack wants me to sign for Aston Martin for next season. I believe I would be paired with Fernando Alonso for 2025. And yeah, 86 success rate, sixth place in the constructors. They are slowing us. However, we could make a massive leap. So there's one question. Do I stay or do I leave? Thanks for watching, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video, in a bit.